Well, we're back here. It's been uh, <coughs> storming here in Central California. And our internet provider didn't provide us. They, uh, they had problems, so we went offline. So here we are back again, uh, starting the show over again. So I'm really sorry about that. And I uh, hope you can find us and can join in with the conversation. Again, remember, this is your show. We want you to be involved. We want your questions and your comments and all that good stuff. And uh, please subscribe and like and all that good, good stuff. So how's it going out there? I hope you're having a great beginning for the first year, first part of the year. Got my son, Wes, working the cameras. Say hi, Wes. Okay. Hey, hey. There he is. There he is again. He was going nuts because, you know, we're, we're just chugging along here, and then all of a sudden, no internet. Gail is over uh, 
a couple hundred miles away working on the message board. So we've got John that says, sounding good, Rich. Thank you, John. And here is Kirby, our regular from Newbury Park. This amp uh, is a quilter. This is a micro, uh, a Mach 3. And I'm not playing out of it. I'm going direct. Now, the... Uh, we should probably play out of it because I think a Telecaster sounds best through an amp. And the title of this uh, live stream is Telecaster for Jazz and Why I Don't Like It. <laughs> to me, the sound has no character. Uh, so, you know, solid body guitars, it's, it's, it relies so much on your amplifier. And... Um, Unlike a hollow body guitar, you get the body influencing the sound of the strings. And on a, on a Telecaster, uh, you don't get that so much. By the way, this is a G&L, after Strat, after Tele, A-S-A-T. This is actually, with a kind of a P90 on it, and a, um, it's a hollow body, or semi-hollow body. I uh, bought a regular type GNL Stratocaster type, and it was uh, it was okay, but I bought the guitar to be versatile to play in. Um, at the time, I was playing with a horn band, and we do everything from Sinatra to Cream, you know. And so, um, you you wanted um, a guitar that was versatile, so uh, I bought this. I felt it had a better sound being semi-hollow body than it did than just a straight um, solid body guitar. So that's why I ended up with this. And I played a lot with this guitar. But I, for this uh, show, I decided to restring it with my set of flat wound strings to see if we get a, any kind of a different sound. We don't really, not a whole lot, big different sound. The problem I have with Telecasters is, believe it or not, I, I really don't care for the body to be this little. As you probably know, I like a bigger body. As a matter of fact, when our uh, 50 years ago, when our first child was born, I had a Telecaster and I had worked at a uh, place called Bunker Ramo as a shipping and receiving guy. And they had these big stacks of cardboard to ship computers and computer parts. This is when a computer was the size of, uh, oh, a garden shed, you know. Um, and this, and, and so I had gotten some um, cardboard and traced this out, stuck it here, and duct taped it to the body so it would be fatter. I remember at the time I was teaching with Ted Green and he would laugh about that. He, oh man, that's yeah, that's crazy, man. So I was always identified as the, the guy with the fat Telecaster. So um, anyway, so I always wanted a fat body and at the time couldn't afford one. Or maybe I actually well, maybe it was right before I got one. But uh, anyways, uh, now the other thing that I don't really care about this is Telecasters, to me, I think it's hard to get super low action. And um, the reason is there's all these variables. You know, you've got all these adjustments to make. and But one of the things is the neck angle. You can alter the neck angle on these. You know, they put a shim in the back and and it's such a pain in the ass to, to do that, to get the neck angle perfect. Whereas you buy a guitar like one of these, the neck angle is set. That's, 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 that's it. Okay. But this, you, you have that adjustment. 
And then you also, of course, have these adjustments, and it's you've got to get it to the radius of here. And if you have an old-style Telecaster that requires the screwdriver down here at the bottom, talk about a pain in the butt, right? This one luckily has it up here. So, um... So this one, it's, I don't think... I've got that has to do with the neck angle. So I can't seem to get it right, and I don't want to. It's a pain in the butt. Um, so I'm going to, after this show, we're going to put slinky strings on there. It, it doesn't matter because the strings were... Um, a little higher anyways. The other thing, I don't like the sharp angle on the bridge. Now, I, I agreed it, it might create more sustain, but it also creates more tension on the string. So the, I like it with the string longer. So, you know, I don't care for that either. But if that's what you all you got and you're used to playing a telly, there's some wonderful players out there. Tim Lurch, uh, Ted Green, that play tellies, you know. But it doesn't really do it for me. Um, want to do less should we play it through an amp or nah. what do you want to do uh, I, don't, I don't know do what you're doing oh okay wait a minute nice uh, let's see what somebody said here greetings from Colombia wow yeah read that name that city name uh, Buck <laughs> Bukara Manga. Bukara Manga, I'm guessing. Bukara Manga. Rolf. Hmm. Wow, that's a rough one. Um, Kirby, what's happening? Kirby Kirby says, was Ted Green's... Yes, it was hollowed out. Um, so, you know, Ted experimented a lot with his guitars. It's a nice little ring on the high end on this. have a nice it, it, it does have a nice sound but it doesn't uh, for me okay it doesn't make my heart go <laughs> so anyway so it, so do you think the reason huh? do, do you think the reason that people play telecasters for jazz is more because it's comfortable and easier maybe easier for them to play or do you think they genuinely like the tone what did ted love the tone of his telecaster or what what's the story there well yeah but it was the tone of the telecaster with his amplifier 
Okay, he 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 didn't play out of just anybody's amp. He had an old Fender Twin. Got ya. So it well, was the it was the amp, and then uh, Ted had a lot of guitars. And later in life, he played guilds, a lot of guilds. He had a Gibson three fifty five. You know, that was on the cover of uh, of uh, uh, Chord Chemistry, which had more switches than the Space Shuttle. Had all these little switches for different frequencies and stuff, so uh, yeah. Um, well, what? Well, maybe then you should plug it into uh, to the amp to see how it how it sounds. Uh, Lance Morris just asked, "What is the tone knob set at on that telly? Sounds bright." It was wide open. You know, when you darken it up. That sounds better, I think. You want to plug it in the amp? Let's plug it in the amp. Hold on, I'm going to kill that. The thing is, uh, it's noisy when I turn it off. There's a this is buzz. Oh yeah, yeah, it's noisy. Uh, you know the the single. Matter of fact, I, a guy had just written me about his Telecaster is noisy with the amplifier. Uh, Jerry Jazz is on here and says uh, I play the Tele with a Henriksen amp. Turn down the tone control. Okay, the tone controls rolling down a little. and Kylo are watching. <laughs> That's my little uh, one and a half year old great grandkids. Um, all right, so there it is with that. plug uh, what one of the hollow bodies in now uh, do, are, do, are we done here or should we keep going no. play something with the track play one more one more thing with the track all right. with the amp all right uh, 
Uh, as Flavius says, my wife had a telly when she enrolled in jazz school. One of the teachers told her that the telly was a country guitar. She promptly mm. replaced the telly with a mm. Samick 335 type, which has served her well. This was 25 years ago. Uh, the neck on a telly is thin, says Mitchell. 866. This, this isn't too thin. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jerry, Jazz, uh, we do have uh, your guitar physics slides that we will chat about coming up. Yeah. All right, um, well, all right. I'll and then it. tell people what you have your strings on there, right? Yeah, this is my strings, which is this. Oh, crap. Here you go, this one. This is 13, 15, 20. Okay, so we sell these on our website. All right. Guitarcollege.net. Uh, Guitarcollege.net. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Wes. Sounds so bright. Ah, not good. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Okay, well, there was. Yeah. Uh, Sounds so bright. <laughs> Even. <laughs> They're bright, man. Yeah. That's, that's what they are. So, you know. Uh, there it is, the Telecaster. You decide if it's a good one for jazz. I don't know. Um, you know, they're, they're a fun little guitar. The, you know, when you listen to one of these guitars, an, a new Telecaster, compared to, like, a friend of mine had a 1958 or 55 Tele, something like that. What a difference that guitar was compared to the newer Tele's. It was... Now this is uh, in the 70s that he had it and we compared them and it's like, holy cow, man. The the 58 was just fat, it was fat. I think somebody wrote something on here about an old style telly. It was originally designed for jazzy music. That's interesting too, isn't it? Because those older Telecasters, I don't know what the heck is so different about them, but uh, they did sound fat, much fatter than the newer ones, so. Huh. Crazy, huh? Um, the amp is a Quilter Aviator Mach 3. Yeah. Um, yeah, anyway. So are you are you switching back to are you going to stay with the amp or are you going to go back into the board or what are we doing here? I'm going to go back into the board. Okay, cool. Um Um yeah, anybody have any other uh questions? Yeah, my old telly had a humbucker on it. Does that brown one have a humbucker? What brown one? You have a brown Telecaster, that older one. I do. <sighs> oh, dude, we go over this every. Wait, wait, you don't wait. have a brown Telec. You don't know what I'm talking about, really? No, I don't. What brown? Telecaster? Remember that the brown Telecaster you just bought it, literally, like in the last three months. Oh, that one. <laughs> oh. Okay, that one. Yeah, that's got humbuckers. Sorry. Yeah, the Telecaster Deluxe or Custom, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Harrow, Glop. Uh, I think we're moving, moving on past the telly now. So here is a Heritage uh, Eagle Classic. It just feels better to me. Feels better, looks better. I think it sounds better.
Oh, to me, this this just has the sound. It's got the feel. It's you know. I I just like a fatter guitar. For me, I think it sounds better. You know, also people see with they listen with their eyes. You know, when you go to a gig and you have a fat body guitar, you know they look at it. Oh, okay, it's a jazz guitar. So you're a jazz player, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it. All right. <clears throat> Isn't that weird? But people people do hear with their eyes. I didn't say that. Sandra D said it. If you watch that Bobby Darren movie. Interesting. Uh, Lee 95757, uh, where did you get that strap? I like the padding and it looks like it has a pick holder. No, it doesn't have a pick holder. This is an LM strap. You can get them at Guitar Center. It's a bass strap. So type in bass strap and uh, it, you'll find it. There you go. Um, let's see Ooh. any other questions. Uh, touch reverb, yeah, there's a little reverb on that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, here you go. Uh, Gawain Smith, uh, Rich, wish you guys a good new year. Is Ibanez a good guitar like the box behind you? I am planning to buy one and change the pickup. This, this is a, a, a Gibson. I think he's just talking about an arch. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, they make a nice guitar for the money, especially. We've gone over that many times. They're nice guitars for the money. And uh, I don't know if you need to change the pickup or not. You'll have to listen to it and see. Um, when you go to change the pickup, we ought to do a little video on that because it, it, to do it correctly, you really need to get into the tone controls and unsolder them there. But <clears throat> who wants to do that? That's so, that's hard. <clears throat> that's a lot of work. <clears throat> so you snip them, you, you snip the wire here, and then you put on some permanent, permanent uh, uh, screw blocks, you know, wire blocks, something like that, so you can just... Uh, wire this in with even without soldering it tighten them down uh, but it, that's something that needs to be explored so <clears throat> anyway um I, i've been as pat metheny is great well yeah i don't know a guy had one at, at camp and i thought it would be the the greatest thing under the sun and i i wasn't that impressed with it well, i don't know uh, let's see. S. Flavius. Is Rich just hearing that guitar acoustically? I guess it would feed back if he was going through the sound, was getting the sound through monitors. He's, no, it's going through uh, monitors in here. Yeah. I got two big monitors way up here, way in the back of the room. So Wes hears it louder than I do. Lucky kid. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, yeah, no, it's, it sounds, it sounds just like it sounds to you guys pretty much out there. Trying to get him to wear headphones so, so he could look as cool as me. And then, <laughs> and then we could eliminate the overhead mic and get a, just a really clean signal on the guitar. It sounds, when you pull the, when you pull that overhead mic out, it makes a huge difference. It co completely changes the sound. That's true. Yeah, you're right. It, and it that, sucks. I think it sucks because it sounds way more like the actual guitar yes. without that stupid overhead mic. That's true. You're right. You're right about that. But mm -hmm. he's too... thinks he won't look as... I mean, look at how cool I look. He's, no, I, I look like not, a radio DJ. It's not, it's not a, how cool Traffic I coming up on the <laughs> sevens, nines... And, Look like a helicopter pilot. You know, when you have glasses and headsets on, bothers me. Remember uh, Gary Owen? Mm -hmm. Laughing? No, you wouldn't. I don't. Uh, JP says, don't get around much anymore. Sounds awesome. Could you use the 
E first string as a pedal tone in the last part of the chorus, would that sound good, a la Joe Pass? The last part of the chorus. The, the high E string? You can do anything you want. This is America. Uh, let's see. That made me laugh out loud. Um, do you, Simon Cowan, uh, asked, do you play Western Swing? I had a Western Swing band for a, a minute. We did a bunch of recordings. I'll have to play that song for him, Wes. Yeah. Right at home? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, so yeah, I did. It, the the band really took off. Well, didn't help that the singer moved away. Um, let's see. And we had a huge band. It was like seven pieces. It's hard to employ those people. Uh, Hero Glop asks, "What is the smallest hollow body guitar that is good enough arch top? That is a good enough arch top." Smallest hollow body guitar. I guess like the George Benson GB10. That's pretty small. Um, well, doesn't Eastman make a... It's a 15-inch, right? Yeah, NATO. They, they make a 603 15-inch. That sounds pretty good. We have, we have videos on that. I just ordered one for a guy, too. Uh, takes about eight months to get, if you're lucky. So we'll see. They do they make a fourteen inch guitar? No, no. no. Um, let's see. Uh, Jerry Jazz bought a Conti Enrada guitar recently for about fifteen hundred. He likes it. Great workmanship. It sounds rather bright to me, even with flat wounds. Well, it's a thin body. It's pretty thin. So I, I think that has something to do with it. They're pretty guitars. Um, so, you know, it's... I, they're made by Peerless, I believe, which is fine. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know. I don't know that, that much about them. I've had a few students bring them to camp, and they, they do sound a little uh, troubling. Conti makes them sound nice. Yeah, uh, Dallas Selman says he's got a hollow GNL, no F hole. Put a Lawler Charlie Christian on it in place of the Seth Lover, which was already great, but now it's even better. Really? That's interesting. I think that Charlie Christian might give it a little more character. You know, um, the Rail Hammer pickup by. Um, Reverend is an interesting pickup. They gave me one two years ago for me to put in one of my guitars, and I never done it. And I, I should do that because it's got a rail pickup on the three bottom strings and then, and then um, set screws on the top. So I think it's, it'll, it, it's pretty interesting. Uh, Joe Naylor designed it, I believe. And so... Uh, have to check it out. The Guild X-175. Now, we just did a demo on one of those. And that was a nice guitar with a P90. You remember that, Wes? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's cool. You might check out that demo. That's that's a nice guitar. And that's priced around 1000 bucks or 1200 something like that. Yeah. It'd be a good option for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it for uh, questions here, buddy. Okay. So... You want to talk about what do you want to talk about? Um, well, let's talk about um, let's talk about well, first off, let's talk about we just did a video on this 
and 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 you're going to edit it right on the 23 yeah. things that you can do in the year 23 2023 that uh can advance your playing i believe but you know we were talking about goals and let's let's just go ahead and get right into this um goals you know are uh, very important and uh, i said at the beginning of the year that I wanted to become a uh, expert on not only goal setting, but goal achieving. And one of the things that is the more I thought about it and the more I've read is your goals on what you do on a daily basis should really align with what the most important things for you are. Uh, what are the five, let's say, the most important things for you? Um, and I wrote out my, I like to call them life priorities, because there's five very important things that if we're not always aligned with that or, or we neglect one or two of them, um, you're not, you, you're not going to be as happy. You're also not going to be as fulfilled and uh, you're going to be lacking in a couple of these areas. So what I wanted to write out is, do you, do you have some kind of graphic with this? Yeah, you want your five priorities? Up? All five? Yeah. No, let me just do the first, and then you can put up the sign for all five. Okay. okay. Uh, the, the first thing, and this is my life priorities, okay, not yours. And, you know, people who know me are, are probably going to say, ah, oh, you're full of crap. Um, but I, you know, want you to know that, um, you know, things change. And, uh, so anyway, number five, number five on the list is your friends. Okay. You know, your friends are super important. And, uh, a lot of times you have friends over the years and they come and they go, they move away. And one of my regrets is not keeping in touch with them. And it just simple keeping in touch with your friends. Your friends, you know, you interact with them. And um, it's really important to, to be the one to make the effort to connect with them. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, and some things that you can do on just, you know, you don't, you don't have to do this as a big portion of your day, but just as a tiny portion of your day that you reach out to, to one of your friends and just say, hey, man, how's it going? You know, text them, phone them, email them, just thinking about you. How's everything going? Just staying in touch with your friends. And your teachers, you know, your teachers after a while probably become your friends and just saying hello. So that's that's something that should probably be on your to do list every day that you make an attempt to reach out to one of your friends, somebody you haven't seen in a while, just to reach out and say hello. And uh, I personally really like doing that. So. I'm going to try to make an effort that I do that a lot more than I do. So we're going to go over these five life priorities. And then at, later on, maybe next week, we're going to talk specifically about guitar priorities. All right, so that was number five. What is number four, in my opinion, in the great scheme of things in your life priority? And that's your vocation. Your vocation, which for me is I'm a guitar player, guitar teacher, and um, that is my vocation, and that's my career. Now, a lot of people in my family might say, well, you put that first. You don't put other things first or something. They might. Would you say that, Wes? Yeah. What? No, I'm not. You're not listening. No. Perfect. That's typical I've family totally, member. I've that's good. 100% tuned out. Uh, <laughs> Although I am thinking, is he going to speed this up? Because Oh, okay, okay, all right. All right, so your career, you know, a lot of times we're defined by our career, especially men. Men are defined by their career. And um, 
Um, one of the things um, you want to do is there's certain other things that are probably more important. Now, I, I had a son-in-law, and, uh, you know, he said, you know, I always thought, you know, the most important thing is your job because you got to have that. But it really isn't. It really isn't in the great scheme of things. And here's why. Your family, the people you care most about, they don't look at you, oh, yeah, this guy, he's a guitar player. No, they look at you as, hey, that's my dad, that's my brother, you know, it's my husband, right? You're defined by those labels, not Rich the guitar player, right? So your family, or excuse me, your vocation is actually, in the grand scheme of things, not all that important as some other things. Now, why did I put that before friends? Well, you're going to have friends all over the place, and you'll have guitar playing friends, you'll have neighbors, you'll have you know, people you meet over the years, you went to school with, you went to college with. <laughs> they come and go, you lose contact. You're, but, but so not quite as important as your vocation. Your vocation is important, but it's number four on the list. Now, here's something that I wanted to touch on, and that is when a person, let's say, works for the city of Los Angeles, whatever they are, an engineer or something, after they retire, they no longer do that. So their identity, they've lost their identity, okay? Yeah, I used to do this. I used to do that. I used to do that. I think it would be important for you to accept a new vocation, which is guitar playing. Yeah, I used to work for the city of Los Angeles. Now I'm a guitar player. Okay. And the reason why I think that's important is it puts more importance on this. This used to be a hobby when I worked for the city of Los Angeles or whatever. Now it's my vocation. Okay. So now it puts more importance on what you're doing and your advancement. <laughs> All right, number three in the top priorities is your health and your appearance. And uh, first, let me say, what, why did you say appearance? Well, musicians and guitar players interact with a lot of people a, long, a lot. And your appearance is very important. I know I need to work on my appearance. You don't have to say that, Wes. You know, yeah. But I try to. <clears throat> All right, but your health. If you don't have your health, you ain't got nothing, right? Everything, everything, your vocation goes to hell. You know, you, you can't keep in touch with people. If your health goes, you're in deep doo-doo. So your health should be a major priority that's something that you revisit every day in your to-do list, okay? <laughs> by the way, these things are not measured by time you spend on them. In other words, your, your vocation is an eight-hour-a-day commitment, let's say, but are you going to spend eight hours a day on your health or 12 hours? No, it's just your attitude. It's your attitude. So, but you can do little bits and pieces of things to help your health and appearance. Try to always dress nice. You know, the, I have a friend that, he says, you know, I'm out looking for gigs. I'm 70 years old. And I'm talking to people 25 years old and asking them to hire me. You know, people in these positions. I can't look like I'm a crippled old man, you know? So I have to try to look as youthful as possible. I think that's important. So he, the, the guy's got a point there. You're, talk, I, you're talking to somebody that could be their grandkid, you know, age-wise. Um, so, all right, so health, super, super important. Number two, number two on the list, your marriage your family, your close friends. All right, all these things should be number two. So um, what you, well, for me, if you're, if you're 
marriage goes south and your family goes south, it's, it's a big bummer that's hard to recover from. So uh, they, those things need to be nurtured. You know, you know there, there was a saying, you know, you got to work on your marriage. I always hated that statement. Work. I, I don't like to work. That's one of the worst things at work. I don't like to work. Yeah, we know that. I like to, I like to enjoy. I like to enjoy. I like to enjoy my marriage. I like to enjoy my family. Okay, I like to enjoy my close friends. So every day that should be on your to-do list to do something for any one of those things, your close friends, your family, your wife, your spouse, <laughs> something... And we'll talk about different actions that you can do later on, but um, that's my priority. So you got to you you have to enjoy them. So it's the same. I like it better than saying you work at it. So you know, like a date night is not a work thing. It's it's something you enjoy, or a family dinner. It's an enjoyment thing. Very important that you do that. Number one on the list: your relationship with God. Okay, I, even if you're, uh, I don't know, you're, you believe, I don't want to get all religious on you, but I'm kind of going to. Those are, that is something that is so important. You know, as you get closer and closer to that dirt nap, <laughs> the more God means something to you. So, now, does that mean I, I, I should be praying eight hours a day? No. It means it, it's on your to-do list to read a Bible verse, to, to say a prayer. Or you know what? One of the things that I think is really important is to constantly pray because he's constantly listening. So if you are constantly praying, you're keeping up that relationship with the guy who made you, okay? He made just you. He didn't make... Anybody else, he made you. And uh, so it's very important that, you know, every man has got a hole in their heart, and it can only be filled by that one element, and that's God. Now, if you're a non-believer, that's all well and good. Good for you. You think I'm crazy or whatever. That's fine. But that subject is so important, I think you really should investigate it. You know, when we talk about your health, you need to investigate your health, investigate what's going on with you, investigate how to be healthier, how to take care of yourself better. All that is really important. Same thing with your relationship to God. Every day you should investigate. Is there really a God? Really? What is all this stuff? Is everybody nuts? You know? So why don't you really investigate it? Do your own investigation, make your own conclusion. So I think that is important. So that is my, post that again, Wes. That was a nice little sign you made. That's my priorities. Mm, there you go. There. Friends, career, health and appearance, marriage, family, your relationship to God. There it is. And so... If you can, in your to-do list, you can include one of those things every day, being very important. Um, so we've spent a lot of time on this. I, th I don't think I want to do further on this right now. No. Okay. No. Nope. Nope. But I do want to say, Rap. I want to do, hold, hold on here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do this. I want to say this uh, uh, this one thing. Hence for your to-do list. Say, say to yourself, what do I regret not doing five years ago? Where, what, what, what would have changed if I had done something different five years ago? And then ask yourself, three years from now, what would I regret if I don't do it? So give yourself that that question. Also, this phrase keeps ringing in my head. 
do it while you still can. You know, there's, <laughs> we, we, we were looking at heart, I was looking at heart to herald angels sing, the re, uh, recording I have. And I told Gail, you know what? I can't play that anymore. My hands physically will not be able to play that arrangement anymore. I would have to adjust that arrangement to fit my hands now. So certain things that you can't wait, you got to do it while you still can, while you still can, can do it. So I'm 71. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do a lot of things five years from now that I can do today. And then one more thing, a quick little deal. When you sit down to do something, let's say you're going to make phone calls, put a, I'm going to spend 20 minutes, have a lower boundary and an upper boundary. So say to yourself, I'm going to do it for 20 minutes, no more than 30. Today I'm going to practice 20 minutes, but no more than 40. Today I'm going to practice. Because what happens, you sit down and do 20 minutes, you do two hours. And then what happens? You don't do it the next two, three days because you did it so much. So set an upper and lower boundary. Okay, we'll talk more about this at a later date. Thank you for listening. Uh, yeah, yeah. Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Good stuff. I was taking notes back here and... You got a lot, of, a lot from that for sure. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. So, did I mention I got a smart ass kid? <laughs> no, I mean I did. I did like the uh, everything is kind of worth investigating part because one thing that for me, I investigated uh, becoming vegan, mm -hmm. and. I did it for a couple of weeks and I was like, wow, I feel way better, way better. I have way more energy. Um, I, I'm not getting super hungry all the time. I'm not, I'm not starving. I'm just like, I have a sustained amount. Like, so I get hungry, but it's not like, oh my God, I'm starving. I got to eat now. Oh, you know, yeah. give me a huge right. burger. You know, it's like I could, I could last on an empty stomach for hours. Oh, yeah. I go, sometimes I, you know, I don't eat till one o'clock and I'll go surfing at 1030 on an empty stomach. I haven't, haven't eaten since, eaten since six or seven the night before. Oh, really? And I'm, you know, I'm hungry out there, but I'm not like I was when I was eating meat when I was like, oh my God, I'm starving. I'm shaky. And like, uh -huh. um, so it's like balanced me out so much. And, uh, and so I mean, I wouldn't have come to that conclusion unless I investigated it, and uh, it's been a it's changed my life. Huh, and, yeah, uh, super good health now, and have way more energy. I feel just a million times better. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, investigate. So that could be part of your to do list when when you go make your make your life per, your priorities. It might be different than mine. I'm sure they are. But when you when you do that, you, your to do list should reflect those priorities. So investigating is part of that. In other words, I'm going to spend 20 minutes investigating, blah blah blah. Well, not just blah blah blah, but whatever it is, and do it. 20 minutes, no more than 30. So give yourself that leeway. Uh, so how about this? We how about we talk about Jerry Jazz's uh, book real quick? Okay. Do we have any questions or anything before we do that? There are no questions. There's a lot of comments that say, uh, you know, they agree with you, or you know, a lot of people agreeing. Uh, there was a comment from Mark Larkins uh, asked if you could play Breezin. Oh, okay. That well, seems we'll like do... a good one to maybe get the Telecaster back out. For that. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll do that. Uh, <laughs> we'll do that a little later on. Hey, what's, what's this? It says, uh, do you need to change the tone control when when you change the pickups? No. Oh, I missed that. Sorry. Uh, Ed Beckert is proof that guitarists should not be afraid of using tellies or strats. I like a strat better, to be honest. 
I don't know. I just like the feel of the strap better. Right. It seems like they're less like, like one person put it on here, ice picky, you know? Strats are? Yeah. Yeah, they got that. They got a, yeah. They have that, like a smoother kind of tone to mm-hmm. them, you know? Um, where, yeah, like a that super twangy country can just get like, oh, God. Huh. <laughs> well, <laughs> done right. Boy, it sounds great. Right. I mean, it's great on country music, but on when you're playing jazz and you're then you're feeling that twang come out in a jazz setting, you're like, oh, that does not sound good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, of course I like a Telecaster with Brad Paisley playing it or something like that, <laughs> Keith Urban. But Yeah, if you read about Brad, too, he, he one thing he says is it's your sound is your amp. It's more your, right. it's your... It's your fingers, your amp, and then your guitar. I think that's the way he put it. Uh, all right, yeah, you you want to see this? Yeah. All right, so this is Jerry Jazz. There he is. Tarphibic Physics Without Phobia. So what are we going to do, scroll through this book? Well, yeah, you, you said we were going to talk about some of it. Yeah, he's talking about... You know, the uh, physics of an archtop guitar. And so he does it in a very entertaining way. Uh, so he's saying he's a physicist and he sees physics everywhere. So, uh, you know, it's funny. This quote right here about the nail, then the hammer, and then treat everything as a nail. I read that quote earlier today. That, really? Yeah, that same quote. Isn't that funny? That is Not funny. on this either. I what didn't is, read what this did you read it on? Some daily like devotional thing, I believe. I have to. Well, I, th- I think we all relate everything we do to something we love or or what we, uh, re- you know. It's like uh, Corey had a had a girlfriend at high school, and and her dad was an avid. Uh, handball player and he says life is like handball everything's like handball you know he'd, he'd say something about music or something yeah you know it's kind of like handball <laughs> yeah okay so uh yeah I know, she, I know what you're saying all right i didn't mean to take away from that i'm sorry so can you know can we do this can we um because this is a long book it's like 60 pages Jerry, is it's there a, a way slides. that... Slides. Huh? It's just slides. It's not a book, he said. Oh, it's slides. Is there a way that the, the readers can get this directly from you or something? Can we post your email or or can you put your email on there and then, and then they can get it? Yeah. I mean, we should have like, asked him to call us on the phone so he could talk about it. Since you're doing no good at here, because you know what's going on in this slide, right? <laughs> <laughs> Especially, yeah, like this this part right here, the slope. Yeah, well, I know the Beach Boys. Right. Yeah, and I know the good vibrations. Yeah, I don't know the fun of it. For, no, I, I don't know anything. How about like this it. one? No, I, no, I don't know that. Well, anyway, I mean, I'm sure it'd be really interesting because, like, you know, all these probably are it's a, probably like a lecture or something, right? I'm guessing. Yeah. So uh, maybe we could uh, do that at some well, point. Well, you could probably call us right now. You want to do that? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. Jerry, well, you think you could call us? Well, he yeah. didn't have my number. Well, maybe, uh, maybe uh, we could set it up for next week and... Talk, All right, let's talk, do that. Talk about. Let's do that. But Jerry, is there is there a way that they could get this? I think it's very interesting what you've done, and obviously put a lot of hard work into it. There's a little. There, you can recognize Ted Green here. Yeah. The neck wiggle. Little Ted Green. But yeah, I mean, even if someone was to get this, yeah, it needs to be explained. Like it's not a book. So yeah, someone. It's like a lecture, or someone needs to be uh, tell yeah, you it's what. Like a side, sh- uh, a slide slide show. show. Someone needs to tell you Pres- what all these mean. It's not like. Yeah. But I mean, all of them would be cool. Cause like this, this slide here. Temperature affects tension. Yeah. 
you know, so just these little, you know. So I think it'd be interesting to talk about some of these things and whether they, uh, whether they affect sound or not. Like, do, would the temperature affect the sound of a string? And then maybe Jerry could be like, yeah, it shortens the wave. Uh, I mean, maybe it's too, too, uh, too slight for us to notice it, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. so anyway, yeah, um, bad job setting this up. So, um, we'll try again next week. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I just read this. Uh, words of wisdom from pro and man of faith. Thank you. This is a blue sky gal. Always admired you. I'm 69 and in poor health, and it's tough to pull out of it. Yeah, boy, your health, man. Ah. So you really got to take good care of yourself. There was a, you know, I watched, I think it was Family Feud. And it's like something like, the question is, what? Costs more money to repair as it gets older. And, of course, it's your car. And then somebody says, your body. <laughs> and that was up there in the answer. It's kind of funny. Yeah. So, anyway, your body falls apart. So, yeah, Jerry, we'll, we'll get in touch with you uh, this coming week. And then we can set that up for next week. I don't think we'd be able to pull it off today. But maybe we can just do a quick little 10-minute chat about, you know, some of the slides that uh impact you know one of some of the biggest things that because uh, a lot of people aren't going to understand it including me so well he said it was a one hour lecture we we can't pull off the full one hour <laughs> lecture. let's just do the highlights uh, for guitar players not i mean not, unless not we physics just, students unless we just did it and just recorded it and then we could just post the whole thing as a youtube video you know, well, it's up to you. It's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, let's uh, let's talk about it, Jerry, and uh, we'll do something mm -hmm. that might be cool. Do like a long talk about uh, long talk about uh, what is going on in the physical world behind guitars. It might be. It's probably mm -hmm. not a lot on that in, in, on YouTube, so it might. Might be good. Yeah, it might be good. Uh, Rich is my email. Okay, chat by phone. All right, we'll do that. Oh. All right, so you want to play something real quick then? Breeze in on the... Sure. On the... All right, let's do breeze in. Uh, do you want me to use the amp or the... Uh, just going direct. Just going direct, but roll off the oh, like totally roll off all the tone because it really is. That's such a phony jazz tone, you know. When you do that, you, yeah, it takes off the trouble, but it certainly isn't a a nice jazz. I mean, tone. it that makes it at least more comparable to uh, what the art stop sounds like. Oh yeah. The minute you put a little bit of that treble in it, in it, it's like. Oh, God, like, that sounds awful. You know what? I got to say this about, I did a recording of one of my songs, and uh, I had a solo on it. And I tried several guitars, and the one that worked is this. So, you know, especially, um, you know, the Telecaster was the guitar of the 60s. You know, for all the big recordings, you know, those. Yeah, I gotta have that, right? Uh, we have somebody from the Ukraine. Yeah, Stepan. Hi, Stepan. Thanks for joining us. Wow. Boy, it's, I hope you're not involved in that big mess. I'm sure you are. Everybody, I just imagine, in Ukraine is involved in that. Okay, Wesley. Here we go. 
Yeah, it just automatically went into that song, and I, so I decided to play it, kind of. So anyway, there was Breezin'. Okay. Oh, by the way, I wanted to mention this. There's a guy out there. His name is James Clear, and he is v totally into goals and... And that, that's his gig, you know, that's, that's what he does. And uh, he's got, look him up, he's got a lot of insight on uh, planning your goals and reaching your goals. And, uh, but I just got, a, there was a, I'm on his newsletter, I got this thing here. Uh, and, w and one of the things he says, here's three ideas, simple ideas. Number one, you gotta show up. You know, you gotta, you gotta be there. If you want a gig, you got to go get one. If you want to practice, you got to sit down and practice if you want to get better. You got to show up. The second one is just start. Don't feel like you got to know all the answers. Just start doing it. Okay? Whatever it is you want to do or whatever you think that's going to advance your life, just start doing it. And then his third thing is kind of a summary. It's nice. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. No single instant, instance will transform your beliefs. But as the votes build up, so does the evidence of your new identity. So, in other words, the trip of a thousand miles starts with the first step. So... Yeah, don't think you, you got to know all the answers to, to everything, but just start doing it. And all those little decisions make up who you are. Yeah, welcome to the world of uh, self-development. <laughs> James Clear. Wow, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Why? What are, you, what are, you, are you making fun of him or what? What are you doing? No, no. He, he, I mean, he's a huge author. He's got that book, Atomic Habit, Habits, oh, that yeah, everyone yeah, yeah. loves. Atomic Habits, yeah. Did yeah. you get that book? Uh, no, uh-uh. Maybe you ought to get it. Maybe you could do a little... <clears throat> no, I... I um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like I'm pretty good. I don't need too much. I do a lot of stuff throughout the day you know uh, oh, I know. Yeah. so I, I yeah i don't i i've read some of his stuff i have not read the whole book but uh i've seen uh like a ted talk with him or he's been on a couple other podcasts mm -hmm. that, that i listened to that were you know like an hour long and he, he's he talked about that that thing that you just read right right there those three points or whatever oh okay um good. yeah i think he's really good so yeah look him up if if you need, just look them up. Yeah. Do a little research. Alfie says, any guitar may sound awful compared to that heritage. <sighs> Greetings from Roma. Boy, I'd love to go there. That's one thing I'd like to do. It uh, To go to Italy would be really nice. I'd like to go to Italy and probably Spain. And then I've been looking at, at videos of Portugal. Hey, Wes, but all right, so look at I joined a gym, like Planet Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> wow, James Clear and Planet Fitness, you sound like you're 27 years old. <laughs> I, I am. You, you know, my Nana, my mom used to look in the mirror and think, who is that? Because <laughs> you, don't, you don't see yourself as that. So anyway, they had... You know, I, I, I did my little workout, you know, and then they have this relax, relaxing chair. And you go in there and you know, I wanted to try it out. And it's got this big screen right in front of you. And it's got, you can warm the chair. You know, it's like a recliner thing. And it's got, a, it's enclosed and it's got this big screen. And you can pick several different things you'd like to watch. And one of them was, an aerial view of Norway. And so there, here they are in Norway going all over all these little towns in the fjords and stuff. Oh, man, it was just beautiful. Where's our Norway guy? 
Gephard, he should, where is he? He's not here today. Yeah, I think he uh, couldn't make it today. One thing about tellies, I used to be able to do this a lot better. Those types of things are really easier on a telly because it's so close to you right here. Hmm. Where are we at? Uh, does anyone have any other questions or anything going on? What, what, do, you, what do you guys need? You guys got something. Uh, Jim Rolfe. Hi, Jim. Jim Rolfe's here. Jim Rolfe is yeah. in the stadium. Hi, Jim Rolfe. I've been meaning to call you. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. What He asked, what was the song after Breezin? Oh, that's my tune. It's called Caliente. That's the one we use for... So it's... Anyway, that it's that thing, it just reminds me of Austin Powers so much. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. <laughs> I, I am. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's and that was done on telly, and so it's of course I don't know the other part of it. That's loud. It is loud. Sorry. Uh Cool Cat asks uh telly on fingerstyle? Oh yeah, well that you know that's Ted Green. Let's see. And it'll roll off that tone knob a little bit. God, it's so clangy. You mean like that? You like that sound? Yeah. Really? That, better than the like chimey clangy thing. Maybe that's my problem. I, the, I, I should have probably always always done that. Um, let's see.
James Bond music, Vic Flick. Hmm, interesting. Cool. Uh, Tim Lurch does a great job. Yes, he does. Do I have a preference using soloing thirds or sixes? Uh, no, I don't. I think the combination of thirds and sixes are pretty cool. Well, those are, are neat sounds. Saudi Arabia. You seeing that, Wes? Yeah. John Wicks. Hi, John. Thank you for joining us. Eddie Davis. Hi, Eddie Davis. How are you doing there? And Ann. Hi, Ann. You miss a comment from uh, Kane on there. <laughs> Kane cooked. Hi, Kaner. <laughs> Poop. <laughs> All right, I got to tell him. All right, they, my grandkids refer to me as Pops. I don't know how I got that name, but it's Pops. I think of Pops as some old geezer driving around in a Jeep. Wait a minute. That was me. So um, Pops is good. So he, he, would, he wrote a note to me once, something like, Happy Birthday, Pops. And he wrote, P-O-O-P-S. <laughs> Happy Birthday, Poops. And so it kind of stuck. Ooh. That didn't sound right. <laughs> kind of stuck on you. Ah, ah. Anyway, hi, Caner Poop. Do you know Strange Meeting by Bill Frizzell? No. Never heard it, even. Uh, Paul Weiland says, uh, would you describe the basic amp settings you use? I have a Quilter Micro 8. Think it's the same. That's not what we have in here, but that's the one you use, right? Yeah. Or the one you've used for years, at least. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And that was a great amp. I, you know, just turn the knobs till it sounds good. Um, start flat with them straight up. That's what I do. If if your guitar feels like it's too trebly, it's got a uh, which is kind of nice. And it's maybe I should have used that out here, but it wasn't on here. Let's see. It's got a high cut filter. Where the heck is it on this? Maybe it's not on this amp. But on that one, it's got a high cut filter. Now it's pouring again, huh? I was gonna, yeah, I was like, what is that noise? Yeah, we might, we might lose our uh, thing again. Anyway, so yeah, put them straight up. If if it's too trebly, look at that high cut filter. And then boost accordingly, sometimes pulling out a little bit of the mids, turning up the little bit of the mids is, is the sound. Boy, wow. can you guys hear that rain? I'm sure. Yeah, we don't get, I, I've never experienced rain like this over here. That's boring. It's a tsunami. Wow. Yeah, that's gnarly. Um, Ruben, I am more traditional. I like a Les Paul or an F hole guitar for jazz. Yeah, we're going to have to uh, get that Les Paul ready soon. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. I can't hardly wait on that one. This has been our most popular live stream today. Is it really? Yeah. You want to know why? Because you have a Telecaster, and you finally did a topic that is interesting and people want to know about. I'll uh -huh. bet you any money you do that Les Paul topic, and people would be tuning in because they're going to be like, oh, yeah. Hmm. What does Rich hmm. think about that Les Paul and jazz? Yeah, that's true. It's more like a Chet thing. Or Jerry Reed, you know. Well. 
You can hear it in England. <laughs> the rain is loud, you can hear it in England. Does it ever stop raining in England? We went to England, I loved it there. Man, I, I thought it was so cool. I loved it there. Um, yeah. What, did, what does this say? Yes, in 1978, I joined a jazz band with a telly. Everyone told me to get an arch top. Finally switched to a 175. Are you happy you did that? Speaking of 175s, Wes, did you get my note about that one that's on reverb? It's on the... It's oh, on yeah. The, it's on the run, the live stream. Yeah, radio. this one? Yeah. So I had a 62 with PAFs. Here's a 58 with PAFs. Look at the price tag of that. What universe are we in? Man, can you believe that? Yeah, why is it so expensive? Well, PAF pickups, right? The original. It's all original. It's all original. This is in very beautiful shape. But look at the price. But you know what? I Check out a 58 Stratocaster or Telecaster. See how much those are. And you're going to say, wow, this is a bargain. <laughs> Jeez. I don't get it. Anyway. Hmm. Hmm. Hey, Wes, why don't you run that video you're planning on running? Um, okay. In Germany, it's pouring as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we, I, I, we have our uh, JGI course on sale right now. Um, it's the full-blown comprehensive jazz course that gets you set up to start improvised soloing. So uh, we have a bunch of students that talked to us um, a while back during the jazz camp, and I put a little video uh, together about it. And uh, you, some of you guys might have seen it, but uh, I'm going to play it real quick while he uh, takes a quick break. Let's face it, the reason most of us got into jazz guitar is because it looks so fun to improvise. Sure, the pros make it look easy, but those of you who've tried it know it's pretty difficult and very intimidating. There's so much content and it's so it goes over your head a lot. Some guys don't even attempt to learn improv soloing because it looks so hard. Others try and fail and totally give up. I've been playing guitar a long time and I don't improv at all, so. Does this sound like you? If so, it's okay. You're not alone. One of my problems as a student was that I go superficially into many songs and I think I know. Well, in actual fact, I don't know any of them. But did you know there are secrets to make it much easier? Rich Severson has shown them to thousands of students. He has a proven way of changing your thinking over time. And he's really good about giving you fundamental uh, knowledge and the uh, techniques that, that will really help you progress. It's able to embrace uh, beginners as well as more experienced players. If you thought you could never play improv solos or have tried before and failed, Rich's course, Jazz Guitar Improv, will work for you. What I love most about Rich is the way he's able to break down very complex material into little bite-sized pieces. And he has so many different ideas for approaching a given chord progression. Now, when we're talking a blues lick on A minor, we can talk with just the simplest things in mind. In other words, how about this? That's all we need. And do it there. Jazz Guitar Improv is a proven, systematic program specifically designed to get players to solo on the fly. The trick? It's all about giving you confidence across the fretboard. It's not so technical that it goes over your head. Like, and I think that's one of the things that I like about his style. Is he's able to sort of, uh, for lack of a better phrase, kind of dumb it down.
Rich has a methodical way of changing your thinking over time. He builds your confidence by teaching you the correct way to approach a song if your goal is to play improv solos. There's never a duplication of information. It's continually challenging and yet continually rewarding. One thing is for sure, when you are confident on the fretboard, magical things start happening and that's when the fun really begins. Rich focuses on six famous jazz standards that will increase your jazz vocabulary and get you playing tasty solos that will impress your friends. I think Rich has a way of feeling, uh, being approachable. And he showed me a couple of easy things to play and sure enough, he got me doing improv for the first time in my life. The longer you wait, the longer you'll be playing the same old things. The time to become a confident jazz soloist is now. Because uh, jazz is complicated, but once you understand how to, um, uh, to improvise and how to use what you already know in a different uh, setting, uh, it, it really opens up a whole new world of, of uh, uh, your ability to improvise and enjoy the jazz, playing jazz music. Sign up for Jazz Guitar Improv today and fulfill your dream of improvising over your favorite songs. Use the promo code RICH on YouTube and instantly save $100. If you don't like it after a few weeks, we'll give you your money back. What do you have to lose? Don't let your dreams of becoming a great jazz improviser go down the drain. Well, nice job on that, Wes. You did a really nice I feel job. like I have a future in the infomercial game. <laughs> I think so. I, I think you do. I think, uh, and, and hey, if you need me, I want to hire me for uh, <laughs> voiceover work. Yeah, there you go. I'm, I'm available. He's available, yeah. Call now. And for our first 15 callers, you also get. Do you do that? Can you do puking on the mic? <laughs> No. Come on. Oh, come on. What is the drag races? Do the ja drag race. Come on down to the... Monster Jam. <laughs> it's Monster Jam taking place at the Cylinder Arena in Fresno. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could do that. I can pull it you off. Could do that. If you have a, a, a motorsports event that you need a <laughs> spokesperson for, I'm available. There you go. Max B says the guy talking sounds like Pat uh, Matheny. WTF. Really? That's you. Yeah, that's uh, that's me. Maybe, maybe we ought to say it's Pat. No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what Pat Matheny says. Boy, that would get some people on there <laughs> yep uh anyway yeah nice nice job on that it makes me sound really important but i think it's a good course i you know we really worked hard on it i want to do part two because those were all 12 bar songs and now we get into like or 12 and uh, 16 bar songs and then we'll get into 32 bar tunes and then uh so that's that's it Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, yeah. Sunday. What, what Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> the Monster Jam, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, um, we've been doing this a couple hours now. What do you think, Wes? Um, yeah, play? unless you got something else to play or anyone have any last-minute questions. Oh, Rob Briggs. Hi, Rob. You were wondering if that pickup pick guard was original. I think it was. The black ones don't disintegrate like the um, tortoise shell ones. <laughs> no, the guy being interviewed uh, with the beard and glasses. Uh, that that was Jacob, who was in the, that sounded like Pat Metheny. 
but never mind. I'm oh. high as a kite, to be honest. <laughs> That's awesome, for sure. Oh, good to know. Um, let's see. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, let's see. You, anyone has any last minute questions? You want to play one more song or something? I've got a uh Zoom call at 1 30 that I got to jump oh, okay. on. Okay, yeah, yeah, we probably had to get going. I, you know, thank you guys for showing up. That's really nice of you, and I appreciate it. Even though you come late, that that's fine. And you know, we get a lot of people watching it after the fact, by the way. You know, again, hit the uh, like button and all that good stuff. That's that's really important. And um, subscribe and all that good stuff. If you're interested in the JGI course, again, it's it's on sale. So you ought to. If you're interested, you ought to you ought to take advantage of that. Hey, let's do this song, Samba Day or Fail. Uh, I just call it. KS Samba, I don't know why I always would call it that, but it might be a little loud, Wes. Okay. Or a little soft. Hey, uh, can you re restart it?
So yeah, that that was. Uh, there you have it. Um, uh, any any last minute deal? You know, um, hey Rob, do you remember you fixed my Telecaster a long time ago? You 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 got rid of the pit the my I had a sixty four Telecaster, and it had the pickup with the resistor on it, so it it sounded like. That's what it sounds like to me when you take and roll the pickup, roll this off. Sounds like this. Sounds very really muffled. I know it gets a little too, too bright. But it... uh, there was one question: Is what is that guitar on the wall with this, the pickup behind you? Single pickup. Oh, let, let me play that. Uh, um, uh, what? Hurry, make it oh, quick. Oh, I got I gotta go at 1:30, man. Okay, we know we gotta go before that. We'll, let me just quickly show this. This is you know the uh, ES125C, hard to find. But check out this tone of this. All right, you you don't think you know you don't think the box matters? Oh, you're sadly mistaken. What you looking at, where, Wes? Cameras on you, buddy. Oh, whoops. <laughs> he like, thank goodness he didn't pick his nose this time. its own character, doesn't it? Each arch top has got its own little, you know, own little sweet little voice. That, that That's what I like about it. So look at, I want to thank everybody for showing up here. And uh, we're going to do it again next Thursday at 11 o'clock. Put it on your calendar. Think about your priorities, right? And next week we're going to talk, get start getting into more specifics. See you later. Adios, bye.